Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. Woolwich attack M15 offered John to suspect. Ruby Karima Mehrug lied in Berlusconi sex case. Syria conflict opposition willing to attend talks. Afghan Taliban battle police in central Kabul. Two hell after RF Typhoon jets escort Pakistan plane over UK. Indian soldiers killed in Kashmir militant ambush. And now the news in detail. Woolwich attack M15 offered job to suspect. M15 asked Woolwich murder suspect Michael Adibalaju if he wanted to work for them about six months before the killing, a childhood friend has said. Abu Nuseba told reporters his friend, one of the two men arrested after a drummer Lee Rugby's murder in South East London on Wednesday, had rejected the approach from the security service. The reporters could not obtain any confirmation from Whitehall sources. Abu Nuseba was arrested at the BBC after giving an interview. The Met Police said 31-year-old man had been arrested at 21.30 BST on Friday in relation to suspected terrorism offences and search warrants were being executed at two homes in East London. The arrest was not directly related to the murder of drummer Rigby, it said. In his news write interview, Abu Nuseba said he thought a change had taken place in his friend after his detentions by security forces on a trip to Kenya last year. Abu Nusayba said Mr. Adibalaijo suggested that he had been physically and sexually abused during the interrogation in a prison cell in the African country. After this, he became withdrawn and less talkative. He was in his bubbly self, Abu Nusayba added. He said Mr. Adibalaijo had told him that upon his return, he was followed up by an M15 who were knocking on his door. He was basically being harassed, Abu Nuseba said. He added, his wording was, they are bugging me. They won't leave me alone. Mikhail Adibalejo was filmed after the attack. He mentioned initially they wanted to ask him if he knew certain individuals. But after him saying that he didn't know these individuals, what he said was they asked him he would be interested in working for them. He was explicit in that he refused to work for them, but he didn't confirm he didn't know the individuals. Press reporter Richard Watson said that, in general terms, it was not out of the ordinary for a security service to approach people for information or even to act as covert sources. Mr. Eddie Balaja, 28, originally from Romford, East London, and fellow suspect of Mikhail Adibovale, 22, of Greenwich, South East London, had been known to M15 for eight years, Whitehall sources told reporters on Thursday. He was uh, basically being uh, harassed by MI5. You know, this is something that he specifically mentioned to me. He said that MI5 had come to him. I think he'd, on, on, his, uh, on his return back, uh, he had been stopped. And subsequently, after that, basically, he was followed up by MR5. You know, he said they came to his house. You know, they were saying, knocking on his door, knocking his door. He pretended that he wasn't there. But they were knocking so much, he thought to himself, like, look, you know what, I need to kind of, like, you know, come and show my face. So he came out, he spoke to the, uh, to the MR5 agent, and they were saying, no, look, we just want to have a chat with you. We just want to speak to you. So when did he tell you this? This is roughly about six months ago. Ruby Karima Merug lied in Berlusconi's case. A dancer alleged to have had paid sex as a minor with Italy's ex-leader Silvio Berlusconi told a court that she had lied to investigators in 2010. Karima El Marug 
said she had made up details about erotic parties held at his villa while he was still Prime Minister. She was testifying at the trial of three former Berlusconi aides accused of soliciting prostitutes for him. Mr. Berlusconi is being tried separately on charges of paying for underage sex with Miss El Marug. Both the dancer and Mr. Berlusconi have denied the allegations. Miss El Marug is not charged with any crime in either case and is formally recognized in both as an injured party. Talked nonsense. On Friday, she appeared as a witness at the trial of TV presenter Emilio Fade, celebrity agent Lily Mora, and Nicole Minetti, a local counselor and former showgirl. They accused of providing prostitutes for Berlusconi's so called Bunga Bunga party evenings. Miss Elmer Rugg, known as Ruby the Heart Stealer, told the court she had lied about receiving 1,87,000 euros from Berlusconi for attending several of his parties. She said she made up the sum to show off. The dancer also went back on testimony that young women had bathed naked at Mr. Berlusconi's restaurant, saying they had only stripped off to their laundry and there had been no contact with ex-Prime Minister. I'm sorry I talked nonsense when I spoke to prosecutors, said Miss Elmer Rook, who is thought to have been aged 17 when she went to the parties. The majority of the things I said were not true. Prosecutors are expected to make their closing statements on 31st May. Syria conflict, opposition willing to attend talks. The main Syrian opposition coalition has said it's willing to attend an international peace conference expected to take place in Geneva next month. But a spokesman for a national coalition, Louis Safi, told reporters that it would only go if President Bashar al-Assad agreed to step down. Earlier, Russia said government had agreed in principle to participate. Previous efforts to find a political solution to the conflict have foundered on preconditions from both sides. Meanwhile, there has been further heavy fighting, Kwazir, a strategically important town between Homs and Lebanese border. The governor, forced back by Hezbollah militants, launched an offensive to recapture Kwazir on Sunday. The state news agency said on Friday a large number of rebel fighters had been killed in the latest clashes. Russia and the US are attempting to convene a conference to negotiate an end to the violence, but they have yet to finalize the date, agenda, timetable of participants, etc. However, they have said any agreement should be based on the final communique of the UN-backed Action Group of Syria meeting in Geneva in June 2012. The communique called for an immediate end to violence and establishment of a transitional government that could include officials serving under Mr. Azam and members of the opposition. It did not state explicitly that the president should step down. Russia has been pressing the Syrian government to agree for dialogue and Foreign Minister spokesman Alexander Lukashevich announced. We note with satisfaction that Damascus has confirmed its readiness in principle to participate in an international conference in the interest of the Syrians themselves finding a political path to a settlement of the conflict that has been devastating for the country and the region. التصريح باننا مستعدون للحوار مع اي سوري كان ليس جديدا لا مع معاذ خطيب ولا مع غيره بدون بدون ما ندخل بمتاهه الاسماء فانا سئلت من الجارديان وقلت بانني مستعد وهذا كلام قلناه له مباشره اما بالنسبه للحوار هنا او هناك فالحوار الوطني السوري هو على ارض سوريا وفي داخل سوريا قولا واحدا وبإدارة سوريا وبحضور سوري فقط لا شروط مسبقة على الحوار وليس مطلوبا من أحد شروطا مسبقة أو ما يسمونه تنازلات مطلوب شيء واحد الموافقة على مبدأ الحوار الإيمان بأن الحوار 
هو آلية لحل سياسي للخروج من الأزمة السورية أفغان تالبان باتل بليز إن سنترال كابول Afghan security forces have fought Taliban insurgents for hours in the center of Kabul after a major explosion shook the city. A Nepali guard and an off-duty policeman were killed along with a number of militants. The attack hit a guest house used by the International Organization for Migration, one of whose employees was badly injured. The Taliban told reporters it was targeting CIA trainers. The attack began about 16 hours local time, that means 11.30 GMT, with a car bombing and it was late evening in Kabul. By the time, Interior Ministry spokesman Siddiq Siddiq said the last of the assailants had been killed. The militants who officials said numbered 5 or 6 had been holed up in the area, home to a number of buildings used by foreign workers. We are dealing with a well-coordinated attack. Kabul police chief Ayub Salangi told reporters as the attack unfolded. He said even police had been injured. A Taliban spokesman said the group had been targeted CIA trainers instructing Afghans at a National Directorate of Security, India's intelligence agency. The IOM, which is affiliated to the UN, said three of its employees had been injured, one of them seriously burned by a grenade. An employee of the International Labour Organization was also wanted. It was not clear whether the guest house used by IOM employees was Taliban's main target. UN Special Envoy Jan Kubi strongly condemned the attack and said all UN staff had been accounted for. During the assault, Afghan TV channel 1 quoted police as saying a group of militants had taken a position inside the nearby headquarters of the Directorate of Afghan Public Protection Force, APPF. A hospital run by the NDS is also in the area. The initial explosion was felt several kilometers away, shattering shop windows and sending a plume of smoke into the sky. There were reports of smaller subsequent blasts. Graham Smith, who works for the Think Tank Crisis Group and lives in the New City neighborhood, about one kilometer away from the site of fighting, said he had heard a constant exchange of gunfire for several hours. It seems to have been contained, which shows how robust Afghan forces are in the capital, he said. In more rural parts of the country, this would have had a much bigger impact. The Taliban announced a spiral offensive in April, saying it would target foreign military bases and diplomatic areas. Last week, another Islamist militant group, Hezb Islami, said it had carried out an attack on a military convoy in Kabul in which at least 15 people were killed and dozens injured. In the last major attack in Kabul, before that, a suicide bomber blew himself up near the defense ministry, killing nine people. Most international troops are scheduled to leave Afghanistan by the end of 2014. Afghan forces are due to take responsibility for the security of the whole country in the next few months for the first time since 1992.